the police department involved with the Debbie Collier case are a bunch of jokers, clones, unprofessional, dangerous clones. The very first video I did on the Debbie Collier case, I was questioning basically if there was no murder here. It's not what we think happened. And in it, I was basically saying, hey, I know it sounds a bit mad, but I think Debbie could have done this to herself because nothing made sense in the case. Still doesn't really, but it makes the most sense. You can find dozens of examples of women setting themselves on fire to off themselves in the last couple of years in the United States. And I said I wouldn't be shocked if it was some sort of overdose. I was speculating on insurance policies and if perhaps Debbie had some sort of incentive to make this look like a murder. It's not a popular theory because it doesn't involve murder, it doesn't have the mystery, but I know I'm not alone in thinking it either. A good few of us thought it was a real possibility. We were in the vast minority, but there was a few of us. And that was my main theory in this case. I didn't go hard exploring theories with the family members early on. Yeah, you see some dodgy backgrounds, but there was nothing we knew to put them there so far away from their home. And the investigation also early on was updated from a homicide investigation to a death investigation. And at the time, I thought that this was very significant and must be a clear sign of it moving away from a homicide investigation, right? That's what you would think. Wrong. Because in their press conference, to my shock, the police completely ruled out an accident and completely ruled out they'd be hurting herself. They were very, very strong in ruling it out. And they were very happy to talk about some of Debbie's family members. And that's where I was like, oh geez, I better let go of this main theory that I have because obviously they know more. They must know something. There must be clear evidence or an indication that this was a murder because their words were very strong. Turns out they had nothing. Phone data has come back and like I said, it could easily do. It has cleared the family. And I expect also they know now that the Venmo was sent from Debbie from her phone while she was alone in the car. They were very happy to throw grieving family members to the wolves. I don't care about little Hasbala Andrew. He wasn't very nice to Debbie when she was alive and his behaviour online afterwards was inappropriate and disrespectful. But the police were very happy to basically let people know they have huge suspicions about Amanda and Andrew basically. And I get it, we all did. But how the hell can they do that press conference and so strongly rule out suicide, rule out an accident? They took it completely off the table and now they're putting it back on. And I, I had suspicions about them as a department holding up a sheet of paper that was a key piece of information and asking people to take photographs of it with their phone, not having notes at the press conference defending their boss, jostling for positions to get the last word in at the end. And watch it again and you will notice, you'll notice a female reporter asking questions that kind of annoy them at the end. She knows, she knows these boys are a bunch of cowboys. The conversation that the detective had with Grey Hughes I thought was very naive. He got lucky there, he got lucky that was Grey because if that was other people they would have recorded that and putting it online. And one of the biggest f red flags that these boys mightn't be up to it is the crime scene. Look at the state of it. Look what they left there. You can still go down there, as far as I know, today and find pieces of Debbie's burnt clothes. You'll find pieces of the paper towels that she bought, the, the piece of tarp, blue gloves everywhere. An absolute joke. It's a disgrace how they left it. They spent probably an hour or two going over their notes for this press conference, practicing their speeches, but did anyone take 15 minutes to go down and clean the crime scene properly? Or maybe there's evidence that you missed. I just can't believe they ruled it out so strongly. I feel like I was tricked by them. Like, why did they rule it out? Based off what? It's like they wanted it to be a murder. They wanted the clout. Forget YouTube looking for clout. What about police departments and police officers looking for clout? And it's so dangerous to them to start pointing fingers. They, they did. They pointed fingers. And they're doing this in a press conference when they don't even have evidence back. It's so dodgy, so unprofessional. Every single one of them better be back up on that stage when they're having a press conference in a few days announcing that Debbie hurt herself or this was some sort of accident. And watch them, watch them if they are. 
I guarantee you they will have less energy. They'll be a bit sad. What, like, what are you sad about? Haven't you figured out this case? Shouldn't you be happy about that? I guarantee you, you'll get a very different demeanour. You won't have people fighting for the microphone to get a word in. They wanted it to be a murder. They wanted the clout and it impacted the investigation. Like, why else were they so keen and so happy to rule it out? It should have never been taken off the table. And it was only taken off to make this a, a bit sexier, I think. Oh, look at us. We have a complicated murder. Look, look at all my missed calls and all these press people that want to talk to me. A bunch of clowns. A bunch of jokers. No wonder people have no trust in the police. If these guys are giving an update on, a, on another case in a, a month's time, there's no way I'm going to take it at face value. Is this just an isolated incident? I don't know. I know Georgia is a big state and they're on opposite sides. But I'm now looking at the Quinton Simon case and being like, oh, are these guys up to it? Does this police department know what it's doing? In that case, the FBI were called in pretty fast, so hopefully not. Although, look at what the FBI did in the Delphi case. There's a good chance that Abby and Libby's case would be solved now if they took the decision not to call the FBI in because they messed a few key things up. Like the awe that I had, granted it came mainly from movies and TV shows when I was growing up, but the awe that I had for police departments and the FBI over in the States is constantly depleting. Like I, for one, I'm no longer looking at the FBI being like, wow, they're the best in the world. Nah, not a chance. Give me the Aussies any day of the week. Better local police departments, better detectives, better use of technology, the government backs them all the time which can help them get around some grey areas legally but who cares they get they get shit done and this Debbie case has really gotten my tits I, I think the police department have been a disgrace and they're just getting away with it people in the states you're just you're all used to it by now you're all used to and you accept shoddy work how they handled this case and the condition that they left the crime scene is just disgraceful behaviour. And all they're waiting on now to come back is autopsy results. I'm expecting that to be an overdose of some sorts. And then they'll have a press conference to tell us that, hey, oh, we were wrong. There was no murder here. Forget everything we said. I'm 90% sure of that. Still a chance that things could turn around again. But either way, all you can do is follow the evidence. And that's not what they did. They jumped the gun. So silly, so unprofessional and dangerous. <sighs> Let me know what you think. Good luck. God bless. I hope everyone has a good day.